What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to another weekly watch list video. In this series, I share with you the stocks that are at the top of my watch list going into Monday morning. So if you get any value out of this, remember to click that like and subscribe button. Let's go. Okay, so this is officially week 31 of my weekly watch list. Thank you guys so much for joining along. We also just passed 20,000 subs. And as I'm sure you can tell, I am in a different location today. I'm actually talking to you from a van. I am on a road trip right now. We rented out a little van to go through the Rocky Mountains for the weekend. And so I'm really enjoying it, but I do not want to miss a single episode of this weekly watch list. So here we are for week number 31. Thank you guys so much for all the support. And today I had a little bit of technical difficulty. My first day filming on the road so instead of using quest trade we are going to be using stockcharts.com let's get right into it okay so when we look at the nasdaq we actually had a great start to the week we basically had monday tuesday wednesday where we started off really strong and then thursday things didn't look very good for us we basically had this giant red candle right here where we fell to about 13,200, and then friday we had a, a decent day we moved up a little bit higher but we finished lower at the end of the week than where we started so not a great week for the nasdaq or technology but when you look at the s p 500 as well as the dow jones they both set all-time highs this week so as you can tell help money is moving out of high growth technology risky stocks and into industrial dividend paying safer stocks that are already making a profit that is why we are seeing the shift here and you can see it in the s p you can also see it in the dow jones both of them set all-time highs this week however friday was a negative day for both of these indices so it's a little bit back and forth between the nasdaq which is sort of your high growth high risk tech stocks and your more traditional more sound blue chip sort of industrial dividend paying stocks in your S&P 500 and your Dow Jones. So a little bit back and forth this week. However, no crazy market crash. Anybody that's telling you there's a market crash isn't looking at the charts right now. It wasn't a great finish to the week, so there might be some uh, pain in store for Monday, Tuesday, but so far we're looking okay. Now, when you look at Bitcoin, you can see we're at about 59,000. Our high all time was around 62,500, somewhere in there. So we're within a couple percent of our all time high. Bitcoin is still doing extremely well. However, the one thing that I do want to point out to you that I noticed here is that the volume going into, as I take this screenshot basically, but going into Thursday, Friday, Saturday was trailing off pretty substantially. We'll see where it finishes today, but the volume over the last few days has been decreasing, which isn't always a great sign. Is 62.5 the high that we're going to see for this year, or is it going to break through? It really depends on how many, in my opinion, how many companies start to use and accept Bitcoin. So that's what I'm focused on when it comes to the price of Bitcoin. And I am exposed to a couple of miners, but let's move on from the Bitcoin. Let's talk about COVID because so far things are looking pretty good. Uh, Biden had a little trip up the stairs, but so far he's doing pretty good on everything else when it comes to COVID. Uh, COVID numbers are down on a daily basis week over week, which is really nice to see. And it looks like the vaccine vaccine is rolling out pretty smoothly so nice to see there as well now let's start looking at the charts this is the slide that i shared with you from facebook of last week so this chart was taken from last week's basically watch this video and this is what it looks like this week so this is what i was trying to point out here is this breakout we've got a very clear trend line formed by basically consecutive lower highs over the course of about six or eight months here and as you can see this week we broke through that trend line and since the low here the stock has actually moved by almost 15 percent in just a matter of two weeks. So lots of action on Facebook. As you can see, we also have way higher volume on Friday. Big, big move up, and we've got a very clear breakout of this trend line. So Facebook is at the top of my list on Monday. If we see a good start to the week for technology, I think Facebook is going to be one of the main reasons for it. The next tech stock that I want to point out to you is Wayfair. Now, I haven't talked about these guys on the watch list before, but they are on my radar because they are now approaching all-time highs. As you can see, back in August and September here, they were basically setting out around $300, $350 here. They came all the way back down to a low of $230 right here, right around January. But since then, it has climbed back up, and they are now testing the all-time highs that were set back here in August, September. We're pretty much right on that level, so I'm really excited. I guess we we peaked right here at an all-time high but we are coming back to that key level so i got my eyes on wayfair for a nice breakout i'm also looking at a company called mogo this was brought up in my discord chat shout out to all the members in my discord chat i think this is a real opportunity here because as you can see we've got a very clear direction the stock is going in the right direction they're moving upwards we set a high of around 13 14 dollars here before coming back down to a low of almost eight dollars we double tested eight dollars right here on like the 23rd of february it looks 
looks like. And then probably the 7th of March here, we double tested the $8 mark. Since then, the stock has moved from around $8 or $9 here all the way to a high of 14 So about a 50% increase in just a matter of the last two weeks. And now we are testing the all-time highs from MoGo. This is a Canadian finance company. Really excited about them. I'm going to be doing some more due diligence and probably a video on them soon. But the stock is really exciting because we are approaching a very key level right now. So I got my eyes on MoGo going into next week. I'm also got my eyes on Apple. It looks like we've got some support around 120. We've got a trend line forming. If we can break through this trend line, I like Apple for a breakout trade. Next company I want to point out to you is Shopify. Now, yes, these charts look different, but as you can see, the key levels are the exact same no matter if you use stockcharts.com or if you use Quest Trade, you can see that this $1,100 level has acted as a key level of resistance once, twice, three times, four times, five times right here going into December. We broke through it at the beginning of December here, and then basically in 2021, we have now tested this $1,100 level three different times. And as you can see, the stock has very clear potential of running to 1,500. So that's a nice, easy 30, 40% trade if you can get in an 1,100 hold. So make your position, take your entry, Put your stop loss at a point where if your technical analysis breaks down, you get out of the trade. But I do think Shopify is a fantastic stock to hold long term. And I think it has great potential for a short term trade as well. Next company I want to point out to you is Tat Lifestyles. This company is based out of the US. They make the uh, Beyond Meat, but of tobacco and cigarettes. And so they make a product that you can smoke. It looks like a cigarette, but it has no nicotine and no tobacco in it. It's made of hemp and they make a great product. The stock has some very clear support right around $4 here. We're coming down and as you can see, we've got kind of a descending triangle right here but major support at four dollars so i think you take the exact same trade with tat you get in right around four dollars you set a stop loss below technical support and you ride that stock up if it bounces off four dollars wait out as long as you can wait for as much confirmation and uh, and positive signals as you can but i think it's a really easy bounce trade off for four dollars and if you guys are interested in learning about how to enter these trades get a good entry and exit understand the charts and read the financials then definitely consider signing up for my my stock market fundamentals course completely free when you sign up with the link down below it's a nine hour course and you get free access to the entire skillshare platform for two weeks so if you can do the entire course in under two weeks the nine hour course in under two weeks you get the entire thing for free when you cancel your subscription or keep your subscription it's about twenty dollars per month and you get access to the entire skillshare platform there's over 3,300 students in the course. There's over 180 reviews and over 80% of them say that this free course exceeded their expectations. So I promise you it'll be the best free resource that you can find online when it comes to learning how to trade the stock market properly. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description down below. Now, next company I wanna talk about is Hillion. I've been in and out of this company twice now, I haven't done so well, and the stock just keeps falling. So I have my eyes on it because I think at some point, it's not gonna be able to fall any lower or it's just gonna provide an because I think at some point it's not gonna be able to fall any lower and I think it's just gonna provide excellent value. So I'm looking at Hillion right now. I see a double bottom right here around this $13 level. You can see that we tested it at the beginning of March. We're testing it again near the end of March here and then right around 15 is gonna be the key level of resistance. So what I am watching for is a bounce off 13, a breakthrough of 15, a breakthrough of the moving average, and some positive indications. That is going to be a good entry point into Hillion, and then I'll set a stop loss just below technical support. So I've got Hillion on my list going into this week. I've also got Dragonfly on my list going into this week. Now I currently own Dragonfly, but I have taken profit on this company like three or four times. I own a small portion of it right now, and I am thinking about adding back into my position because we are coming back down to key level of support. As you can see, this $2, 225 level has acted as support once, twice, and now we are coming back down to this level again. It acted as resistance beforehand, and I think Dragonfly is moving in the right direction. They're putting out a ton of great press releases. They just partnered with Steve Wozniak, one of the founders of Apple, and I really like the business model and what they're doing. They're not my favorite drone company, but I do think they're a very good drone company. Now, one of my favorite drone companies is Drone Delivery Canada. I'm also thinking about adding to this position because as you can see here, the stock is coming back down to another key level of support. Ran around $1.50, it acted as resistance. We came back down to a dollar, broke through to a high of $2.50, and then it looked like management basically sold a bunch of shares. That kind of took a hit into the confidence. However, I think at $1.50 here, you're scooping up a company that provides some great value, a lot of opportunity here. And I think you're getting it at a little bit of a steal because just look at the signals and the indicators right now. It's a very clear trend line. We've got key levels of support 
support. The MACD is at its lowest it's been in a very long time. The RSI is coming down. I think there's a great opportunity in Drone Delivery Canada. I'm very excited to see their next quarterly press release and what their financials look like as soon as those comes out. I will make a video for it. So if you can wait till then, maybe you hold off and hope that $1.50 holds. Otherwise, you buy the break, buy the turnaround, buy the reversal. Wait for the price action to tell you that it's time to get in because I think there is a big opportunity here. Unless they just release the press release and they blow it out of the water, then you might be too late anyway. But I do think there's an opportunity there. Next company I like in the basically transportation space is Cargo Jet. Now, I pointed Cargo Jet out a little while ago thinking that they were going to bounce off 200 here. They ended up actually breaking through down below 200, and the stock has now come all the way back down to support right, right around 160, 165, the same level that it found support in September and the same level that acted as resistance in July and August. So I do think this is a very key level to watch for Cargo Jet. If you're looking to get into this company, this could be a nice bounce off 160, or if 160 falls, I think the next level is going to be 140, and a could be a great opportunity to scalp a little short trade in it. This is the company that actually gave Drake his airplane. So really, really interesting company. They're based in Canada here. They actually have a great business model, uh, but the stock has been on quite a run over the last few years. Now, if you are interested in seeing more technical analysis like this, then you should definitely consider signing up for my Discord chat and watch list. That is where I post almost on a daily basis, at least when I'm not on the road, and I share most of my charts and some of my trades as well. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely consider signing up with the link down down below. That's where I'm trying to build a community of traders where everybody shares their trades, share their resources, shares what they're looking at, and shares their due diligence so that everybody can make more money together. If you're interested in joining a community like that, definitely consider click checking out the links down below. And in summary, I think it's going to be really important to keep an eye on how Monday morning starts off. If we just see a sea of red, it could be a signal of what's to come for the rest of the week. However, that could also mean an opportunity to buy more great stocks at lower prices. You need to make sure that you manage your risk though. Make sure that you can handle if Monday, Tuesday come out red, make sure that you have a plan in place. You've now got the rest of the weekend or whatever time you have left to put that plan in place. So make sure that you know what you're going to do. I personally think that it might be a choppy week it might even be a choppy couple of weeks but the good companies are not slowing down you saw that Facebook is breaking out right now if you look at the Google chart the only thing that stock has done is gone up and so if you focus on really good companies that have a good foundation good management and good business model I think you'll do extremely well and if you get any value out of this video remember to click that like and subscribe button I sincerely appreciate it and we'll see you guys in the next video good luck trading good luck investing talk to you soon